Every pickleball player needs to have a few trick shots up their sleeve. They may not be the smartest, most effective thing to do, but remember, the point of playing pickleball is to have fun. And there's no better feeling than successfully pulling off a trick shot in a game. Today I'm going to take you through the top 8 most commonly used trick shots and how to use them. They'll start off easy and then they'll get progressively harder as the list goes on. So without further ado, let's get started. At number 8 on our list, we have the Kyle, which is named after Kyle Yates. Essentially, what you're going to do here is prepare like you're going to hit a backhand dink, then at the last second, you flip your paddle and hit a forehand speed up. You can also do this from a forehand dink to a backhand speed up, which would be called the reverse Kyle. That being said, it's much easier to go from a backhand dink to a forehand speed up, which is how you see most players using this shot. If you can hit backhand dinks and forehand speed ups, then this shot isn't that tough to learn how to use effectively. You just need to make sure you hold the backhand dink to the last second if you really want it to take your opponents by surprise. This shot is perfect when all four players are at the kitchen in a dinking situation. Generally, speed ups are more effective if you take them down the line at the person who's standing closer to you. Overall, the cow is definitely one of the easiest trick shots on this list to get the hang of, and it can also be pretty effective. At number seven on our list, we have the ATP, which stands for around the post. I was debating even putting this on the list as a trick shot because it's actually a play that pros use often. That being said, there's no better feeling than using one of these effectively. The main way players hit ATPs are in dinking situations where the other team gives them a really crazy angle. Instead of cutting off the angle, you need to wait until the ball's far enough off the court to where you have enough space to get it around the post. You want to aim the shot lower than you normally would because this makes it really difficult for your opponent to make it back. Also, try to hit your ATPs down the line. If you aim it to the middle of the court or cross court, there's a good chance that you'll miss it in the net. There's some crazy variations of this shot you can use, like the inside out ATP, the behind the back ATP, there's also whatever this one is. But the standard ATP is probably the most realistic option if you want to use it effectively. This is one shot on the list that you should definitely figure out because there's actually realistic application and it's not that tricky. But moving on, at number six on the list, we have the frontwards facing tweener. All you're doing for this one is letting the ball go between your legs and hitting it like a forehand but with your arm behind your body. The shot's actually pretty versatile in that you can use it in a variety of different places on the court. If you're trying to show off, you can replace any dink or drop with these and it shouldn't be too hard to make it work. In my opinion, the coolest way to use this shot is on a reset, when someone hits it hard right at your feet. Because it's tough to get out of the way in time, you can just spread your legs and defend with a tweener drop. Bonus points if you can win the point after using this shot. Also, bonus points if you dink that like button. <laughs> at number five on our list, we have the behind the back shot. Similar to our last shot, this one has some versatility in when you can use it. To hit it, all you need to do is put your arm behind your back and hit it with the same grip as your volleys on the forehand side of your paddle. The most common way I've seen pros use this shot is in fast volley exchanges at the kitchen, but you really can use it anywhere on the court. Generally though, it's off of a faster shot that you can't get to your backhand in time for because your weight is shifted towards your forehand. For whatever reason, this shot's definitely more difficult to get the hang of than the frontwards tweener. I think on the frontwards tweener, you still keep the coordination of your forehand, but the behind the back sort of seems like its own shot, so you'll definitely need to practice to get the hang of it. The easiest way to learn is to start off going easy on a wall. Once you get a little better, you can start going back and forth. Once you're really good, you can try to do it out of the air. Whenever you're drilling on the wall, I highly recommend that you use something like the dink pad for guidance. It's an awesome way to train your dinks and quick hands, and it's good for trick shots too. If you want to get yourself a dink pad, we have a link below in the description. Anyways guys, the behind the back shot's definitely one of my favorites on the list. Put in some reps on the wall, and you'll be using it in games in no time. At number four, we have the world famous Ernie. Similar to the ATP, I wasn't sure if I should include this shot on the list because it's actually an effective play that pros use frequently. But I had to include it because who doesn't love a good Ernie? Essentially, an Ernie is where we hop over to the kitchen so that we can get closer to the net on an easy shot. Generally, this shot's easier to do if you're gonna use your forehand. So that would be the left side for righties and the right side for lefties. You can still do an Ernie on your backhand too. It's just a little bit tougher because you can't reach as far. This shot's higher up on the list because as you can see, it requires some physicality. Looking at the technique, you want to make sure that you jump with your inside leg going forward, which to me actually didn't really make sense in the beginning. But if you jump with your outside leg, it's actually harder because you're farther from the end of the kitchen and you can't explode as much. So when you jump, your goal is to pick off the ball with what's essentially a mid-air forehand volley. If you can make the jump, then the Ernie actually isn't that hard. The key thing that determines your success in the Ernie is whether or not the ball is in the right spot to where you can pull it off. It needs to be close enough to the sideline or else you won't be able to reach it. The number one way you'll get this shot is if you're in a dinking situation and the person in front of you decides to go down the line. Generally, a good time to try the Ernie is when they're off balance or they look like they're not gonna be able to hit the shot cross court. 
Overall, if your physicality allows it, the Ernie's an unbelievable shot to add to your arsenal. And remember, it's an effective play. So make sure to send this video to your partner so you can both use this to keep your opponents guessing. At number three, we have the De La Rosa. This shot's where you get lobbed, and instead of trying to drop the ball in the kitchen, you blast a forehand and take your opponents off guard with power. This shot got its name after a viral highlight of player Daniel De La Rosa hit the internet. Overall though, the shot's pretty straightforward. It is pretty difficult to hit a forehand this hard while running backwards though, which is why this shot's so high on the list. This shot's tough guys, so be careful. I don't want to be getting any comments from someone saying they tried and face planted. That being said, I'd love if you guys commented any trick shots that I may have missed. I made this list off the top of my head, so please let me know if I forgot anything good. Moving on to the second most difficult, but arguably the most difficult shot on the list, the Burt. This one's so tricky that it's almost unrealistic for normal players to use. But the concept's that you're essentially doing an Ernie where you poach in front of your partner to pick off the shot and scale the kitchen. You need to be very good at anticipating where your opponent's shot's going to go, because if you aren't, they may hit to the side that you're just standing. You also need to make sure you don't body slam your partner. This one's tough guys, so be careful about when you try it. It's also highly risky, even if you do pull it off. That being said, if you can use a Burt and win the point, it will be remembered by everyone on the court, guaranteed. At our number one trick shot of the day, we have the backwards tweener. This is where you're facing away from the court and you hit the ball between your legs. If you don't have the feel for this shot, it can seem extremely awkward. In order to get power, you need to use some wrist flick. However, assuming both your opponents are at the net, using the drop here it might be your best bet if you have any plans of staying in the point. That said, there's no better feeling than a nice hard tweener. To learn the shot, start off by dropping the ball between your legs and getting the feel for hitting it. Then start to throw it to yourself. Once you have this down, have someone lob you so you can try it off a real shot. It'll take some time to figure out, but once you can use this successfully in your games, you'll become an open play legend. And if you want to learn deceptive pickleball shots that are a bit more realistic to use, watch this.